I'm a planner before I'm a packer, if that makes sense. I make a, I make a, especially now, like I'm, because I know what we're doing now. Before, I just brought everything I absolutely wanted to have with me, and that was a fucking mistake. That was dumb. You know what I realized I don't know? I don't know how to do formulas on spreadsheets. You know how people can make the spreadsheet say total up uh, this cell yeah. to this cell? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Playing that game. Because I, I make sure tell myself okay i cannot start this in the daytime i can't start playing this when i have other shit to do because i won't do other shit my point is you were already in the house because 2023 i was in romania so i wasn't in the house you are so, correct I, I know <laughs> yeah i know correct. it's 2022 oh god this is just turning into a nerd podcast but who cares listeners if you care about the nfl stuff we'll talk about it last week <laughs> <laughs> good call we'll get yeah. to it in the past um yeah. Hey, what's going on out there, you big sexy world travelers? This is Judgmentalist coming at you with kind of a bank episode. It's really more of a pre-recorded episode for us because we know where it's going to be going. Because at the time that you're listening to this, I'm in a different country. Big Fixie's in a different country. We might even be on airplanes. I haven't really looked that far ahead of the calendar. We just know that at the time that this drops, we're not going to be available to do it. Here's your host, Big Sexy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever this is hitting your ear holes, I hope that it is good. Yeah, uh, but when this drops, you'll be in Egypt. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, this would be an opportune time for me to actually look at that calendar. You're yeah, probably right. And I, I believe I'll be on my way to... Nope, I'll be in Spain. If my if the calendar is correct, and you know this is, and because it's funny, we say this, it's not really a bank. It is a pre-recorded episode because we're both going to be in transit. Not next, you'll be in transit next week, right? Correct. And I'll be in transit the following week. Now we may still do a live episode next week. Right. 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 So, so okay, so if this episode, I guess, will drop on maybe the 22nd, I'm right. actually going to be either be in London or boarding an airplane from London to... Right, because, yeah, because next week we'll record a live one that... Right. Um, we'll, 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 we'll record a live <laughs> one that airs on the 15th, and this one will air on the 22nd. Correct, correct. So I'll actually be in London or an yeah. airplane. <clears throat> and I will I will have been in Spain for a week. Depending on when this is hitting your ear holes. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, but right now we're we're we're, we're getting this recording in early because we don't know. You know, we want to be sure to 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 get it in early. What the fuck? Yeah, if, that's what we're doing. We're getting it in early. If you are listening to this episode here on the day that it drops, we will probably be recording next week's episode and streaming it live tomorrow, but maybe not because you're going to be on a different continent and our time is going to be all fucked up and it right. might not be at a time that works for folks because remember when you're in Vegas, California, with same time zone, right? we record at what is and, and live stream generally at what is like four in the afternoon east coast time right but when you were in spain we were doing those recordings at like a, a eight nine a.m your time eight or nine a.m east coast time yeah because that so, would be like six would be like uh <clears throat> that was two p wait what's the math on that I think it was still around 3 p.m. ish. What's eight plus nine? 
<laughs> a plus 17. nine is fourteen. No, seventeen. Oh, a, a plus. No, I'm saying a plus nine. A plus nine is seventeen. That's five p.m. Yeah, that's five p.m. So yeah, right. I, I was recording the evening time in Spain, but it was morning for you. Here it is evening for you and early afternoon or, or, or late morning for me. Right. Ah, time travel. Big Tech Digital Nomad maintaining their reputation as the number one time travel podcast whose host name is Big Sexy with a co-host who's a hypnotist. Brought to you by Topo Chico, the number one mineral water for time travelers. Yeah, I wish. If we can get Topo Chico to sponsor us, that'd be hot. Uh, <laughs> although, you know, I, 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 oh, I finally had a Topo Chico. Yeah. I hate sparkling water. And I, I hated Topo Chico until I added my Kool Aid additive to it. Ooh! And I turned it from a just a basic sparkling water, mineral water, to a cherry flavored sparkling mineral water, and that made it delicious. So in cans, at least where I am, you can purchase these flavored Topo Chico seltzers in blueberry hibiscus, some sort of tangerine and some sort of lime as well as the basic, right? The basic. Um, I found that adding my own flavoring is better than when they do it. Cause a lot of times it just tastes like they took a piece of fruit and waved it over the bottle <laughs> and that kind of gave it its flavor. Uh, I wanted, I wanted to, Really, I want to get rid of the 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 salty taste in the mineral mineral water and make it a lot sweeter, which is what I, what what Kool Aid does for me. And that's Kool Aid yeah. brand Kool Aid. And Kool Aid, you should be a sponsor of the podcast. All right, so you are not far from hopping on a plane and heading back to Europe for an indeterminate amount of time. Less than two weeks, and the the maximum time will be there will be ninety days. In in the Shenzhen in in that area, you are correct. Right. So correct. how how much have you already stocked up on, on Kool Aid volume wise? I have the problem is I keep using it. So every time I go to the store, okay, maybe about seventy five percent of the time I go to the store, I buy one to two bottles, one to two little bottles of Kool Aid, and I go to the store a few times a week. So I probably have. Maybe about anywhere between eight to twelve. Okay. Currently, I we're here less than two weeks. I'm gonna do a run. I'm gonna take an inventory, see how many I have, and then I'm probably gonna double what I have. I'll probably Which one last you? Week, two a week. Uh, depends on on you know my how thirsty how thirsty I get. One could last a week. A little bit more than a week if both me and the wife are drinking you know my wife really likes the cherry and will occasionally do grape uh my favorite is the cherry the grape they have a watermelon flavored one at the stater brothers near my mom's house which i've never seen before so i'm definitely gonna buy all that i'll buy that all of it and then i like the tropical punch so i luckily i have a wide variety so it the bottles last me a little bit longer um, because my wife would just decimate the cherry. Yeah. Right. And so, the, but the other ones last a little longer because I don't always add it because I am sometimes okay with just water. Right. I'm sometimes okay with just, you know, just a good old refreshing bottle of uh, ice cold water. Also, uh, we're stocking up on, now we're also stocking up on like seasonings that we mm -hmm. need to have really good taco seasoning there and my wife likes to make a taco soup uh, and so we've been stocking up on that so every time i go to the store i buy a couple packets of those we have a lot of that because it's only like a dollar a packet the, the kool-aid is like four bucks at Santa brothers or three bucks at walmart and so sometimes we're on a tight enough budget i'm like, i can't afford to, to to get that at the moment but yeah but when, when i can like i'm supposed to go to the store today uh, we're getting ready for a party this weekend, uh, our, our our safe travels party, and I realized like the thought hit me like this weekend, 
we'll have the party next weekend. We're doing the, our last garage sale because that following week we'll be on a plane. It's that fast. It's coming that oh, fast. Oh, yeah. So that's exciting. And I'm really looking forward to traveling again. I'm not looking forward to the – because I get, I'm kind of am looking forward to the actual travel of it. Uh, I'm not looking forward to the suitcase aspect of it and the decision-making. I know, I know last episode we talked about, you know, the how you and your wife pack differently. Yeah. Um, and me and my wife pack somewhat similar. I'm a planner before I'm a packer, if that makes sense. I make a, I make a, especially now, like I, because I know what we're doing now. Before, I just brought everything I absolutely wanted to have with me, and that was a fucking mistake. That was dumb. But now that I know what we need, and we already have stuff over there, right? And I'm kind of kicking myself for not making an inventory list of what we left there so I can compare it to the list of what we're bringing. Where did you leave stuff? At my friend uh, Kelsey's house. Shout out to Kelsey and Cammie. Uh, we, we, so we have three large suitcases, and we filled one large suitcase with stuff and left it at their place. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so my my whole thing, like, just to kind of put through my thought process, you know, I'm gone for like two weeks on this trip. And I'm going for two weeks in what is no doubt going to be distinctly different climates. I, I, it's going to be super right. hot when we're in Cairo. It's probably going to, I would imagine that it's going to be reasonable on the riverboat cruise, but who knows? But because you get that kind of water and, and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. But any of the stops, it's going to be hot, like summer. It's, it's basically the beginning of their summer in Egypt. But by the time we get to London, it's not going to be hot. I don't know that it gets super hot on a regular basis from my understanding in London. And it, know, it may be nice and temperate. So, you know, obviously different clothes are necessary, but I think I've probably told this story on here before, like five, six years ago, when I actually had the time to do things like play in poker tournaments, uh, I went to Vegas for a week to play in a couple of World Series of Poker events and got out there one time on this one trip and realized that I didn't pack, pack any shorts or pants other than the ones that I was wearing on the plane, <laughs> pair of jeans. And, you know, other clothes, yes. You know, right. plenty of underwear. Probably underwear and socks are probably the first things that I pack. Right. And then and then whatever shirts I'm going to wear. And then, obviously, if I forget to bring pants, then I forgot to bring pants, which has happened at least that one time. And I didn't even bother. And we were staying at Planet Hollywood at the time. So... I have full access to the Miracle Mile shops, right. plenty of places to go and get clothes, not just junky, touristy bullshit clothing, but actual clothes. Like there's right. an H&M in there. There's, I don't know what the hell else is in there because I don't really give a shit about that kind of stuff, but it's all in there on those Miracle Mile shops. I very well could have gone and, and bought other pants, but as long as I don't ruin them, I don't care for a pair of jeans. I'll wear them for a week. You know, it's not ideal, right. but but I'll do it. So, like, I'm not, you know, my my bag is going to be light. By the time I pack it, it's going to probably end up having some of my wife's stuff in there because I will, I, I'm, I can very easily pack light. Um, and I don't really, there's not, you know, it's not like, especially now, like, I'm going to hang out with a bunch of magicians but my whole worldview on what i perform and how that work is cha works has changed so much in the past year that it's not like i'm gonna have a bunch of different gadgets and gimmicks and and decks right. of playing cards or other shit in my bag i'll probably have zero of those in my bag and a couple of pendulums because i probably will end up doing hypnosis at some point in time i would find it hard to believe that in a setting like <laughs> that when the awareness and knowledge of what i'm capable of doing is is brought about that i'm not asked to do it and i'm not yeah. you, you all know me i'll say yes, go. um you know so 
it, it's it's none of that stuff's gonna get packed. I'll probably bring some books for the plane. And you know, again, my my needs even over two weeks, clothing wise, aren't gonna be incredible. We'll pay money to probably have our clothes laundered or use laundry machines on the cruise ship. We've already checked to make right. sure that there's access to that. So yeah, laundry, laundry services on cruise ships, listeners, I'm telling you, laundry services on cruise ships are godsend. Pay the money. It's worth it. Yeah. So, you know, the likelihood, depending on what that turnaround time of us sending clothing, if it's a service so that it's returned to us on the disembarkation day, it's probably happening. Um, high, yeah, usually, high yeah, usually those cruise lines, if you get it to them by like nine in the morning, eight or nine in the morning, they can get it to you. It'll take a day. Yeah. And they'll get it to you before 5 p.m. the following day. So, we'll, you know, we'll figure that out once we're on board. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll go to London with mostly clean clothes. Granted, we'll probably be wearing different stuff when we get to London, but. Maybe. Who it knows? Might be, it might be lovely when you get to London. London yeah, who, who London knows? Is, um, it's hard to get You nice. know, and I, I'm pretty just wear whatever and, and go with it anyway. So yeah, my issue, my issue is I'm all about, uh, I, I, I have a lot of t-shirts. I'm a t-shirt guy. Yeah. And I have a wide variety of t-shirts. And of course my knee jerk is I want to take all my t-shirts cause my, I want to have different expressions on different days. And I want to, you know, today might be a star Wars day and tomorrow might be a Marvel day, or it's going to be a, you know, whatever. However, I now have uh merch and self promotion to consider. Yeah. So four of those shirts are already taken up with podcast stuff. Two big sex digital nomad shirts and two rainbow dreamcatcher the love podcast shirts. So that's four shirts and I'm limiting myself to 12 t-shirts. Which sounds like a lot. But then I started breaking it down. So that's two Rainbow Dreamcatcher, two Big Sexy Digital Nomad. Uh, I'm taking uh, at least one Marvel shirt. I have a print shirt, probably one or two print shirts. Uh, my Disney shirt, which is one of my favorite T-shirts, is Peter Pan. And it just says, I'm so fly, I'll never land, which I, I fucking love that. And... I have to bring a Raiders t-shirt, right? And then Marvel, Star Wars. So yeah, Marvel, Star Wars, Raiders, Prince, two podcasts. And then two, sh almost two shirts for like all of them, except for like, I'm only like one Raiders t-shirt and I think just one Star Wars t-shirt. One of my Star Wars t-shirts, sadly, I had to throw away today. It got a hole in the armpit. Mm. And I'm, I'm very much a, 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 a firm believer as I, I used to say, I make too much money to wear things with holes. But now I don't make any money, really. But so now I had to say, my wife makes too much money for me to wear things with holes. <laughs> and so I, I won't. I, I had to toss that shirt. It was a good one. It was a Darth Vader shirt that said, who's your daddy? Yeah. You know, I love those kind of shirts. I love, But, you know, I, I, I will be leaving. I mean, I have maybe about 30 to 40 T-shirts in, in total. Yeah. And, I, and I, I love them all. I have them because they all speak to my personality, right? Uh, but I, I started, I've been making my my packing list. I had to do a visual packing list and outline so I know what to pack because the worst thing I hate is forgetting shit. But like having gone, you know, I had my purple onesie and I had it with me and then I shipped it back. And then we were still in Europe come September and, you know, October and November and December. And God, I wish I had my onesie <laughs> at that time. And I said, you know what? I'm taking my onesie, and I'm I'm doing it smart. I'm not packing it. You're wearing it I'm, on. I'm wearing it on. Yes. 
And so that'll save that weight. And then I like I'll, I'll probably have my jeans and a t-shirt underneath the onesie. So it's going to be hot as balls. But luckily, planes tend to be cold uh, or, or very chill. And so it'll be slightly uncomfortable for a bit. But we're also landing at night. Yeah. Right? So so th- that should work out. So I'm putting I'm going to put on some of my heaviest weight wise clothes to save me the space in my baggage. But and then I'm also taking my PlayStation. Yeah, that's right. And and my wife put together a spreadsheet. You know what I realized? I don't know. I don't know how to do formulas on spreadsheets. You know how people can make the spreadsheet say total up uh, this cell yeah. to this cell. I don't know how to do that. I, I I should know how to do that. I've I've seen I've seen it done. I've done it before. I'm sure, but I have not retained the memory of how to to really utilize spreadsheets in that fashion. You know, now docs I got all day long. I can I can make tons of docs and flyers and beautiful stuff, but spreadsheets not my forte. So I got to learn how to do that. But um, my wife made one luckily, so she, she already did the formula. I just got to copy and paste. Uh, weight requirements. We have the uh, she has how much weight is each package is allotted, and then how much weight is everything we're putting in it. Right, right. Um, beer in a backpack, quite good at manipulating spreadsheets oh good i have to reach out and tell them to help me out yeah because when you did the um the data mining for the high schools in maryland and delaware Mm -hmm. you put the address like all on one line right which is great and fine other than trying to mail merge it into a label it got a little wonky Ah. so i was like hey do you know how to do this and he was like share the sheet with me and then literally, because when you know how to do the stuff and the formulas, right. this is it, it no longer becomes work. The work is in remembering how to do the thing that you want to have done. I want to say it was like 10 minutes. And he was like, okay, cool. They're done. Like, oh. <laughs> because it was it's not manual work. It's just the, oh, just what whatever the hell Hi- you do. To make highlight, it change the formula, and it'll... it'll... Boop, 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 boop. Here you go. You're done. That, that's, a talent, that's a skill that I do not have. Uh, I, I'm able to add things to a spreadsheet, uh, as you can see, obviously, because I'm I sent you spreadsheets and I've, I've yes. not, and, and when I do spreadsheets for the podcasts, you know, uh, I have all of our episodes listed, all the summaries listed, all the dates released, all the guests we've ever mentioned and talked about. So we have like all that. I I, I like that and I like having information, but formulas and mathematics of it all, not my forte, y'all. I'm not good at that. Yeah. So the the packing list is completed. is is almost completed. There's it's quite long. It's it's a bit long, but it's a lot smaller than what we had when we left. Yeah. And, well, and now, clear. right. And now I'm getting into the um, the weeds of. Okay, let me start putting away and and making sure I know where everything is. So when the time comes, and I might do a mock run for a pack, right? It's just a hassle of doing things like unplugging my PlayStation and putting it in. However, I do have a PlayStation 3 that is not connected to anything. So I might use that as a proxy so I don't have to unplug my PlayStation 4 for the packing, right? So that I don't have to deal with the the moving and the unpacking and and then the resetting up of my PlayStation because I'm still playing Fallout. And I don't want to <laughs> deal with uh, disconnecting and disconnecting. Oh, oh, son, I, I'm up to. I have to force myself to not stay up till four in the morning every day <laughs> playing that game because I, I make sure I tell myself, okay, I cannot start this in the daytime. I can't start playing this when I have other shit to do because I won't do other shit. It and, is, in general, as a series, one of the easiest games to just get absorbed into and everything else. It's is insane. Locked. Well, it's because, one, it's, a, it's an open world game. Yeah. And then you can collect shit. Yeah. And yeah. you can be you can be a hoarder in the game. But, you know, it's funny because, you know, you, you carry, you, you start picking up so much stuff that you can't walk anymore. Yep. Right, that you're allowed to 
But you, you know, can walk. You just can't walk that fast. So you, you can't walk that fast. Walk. You have to walk really, really slowly. And and you know what happens when you when you find a bunch of things that you want to take and you want to sell because they're worth value and you got to carry them all. You go, okay, I guess I'm going to walk slow to the next town where I can sell this stuff because you know it's worth quite a bit of bottle caps. Yeah. But but it's going to take me half hour to get there. Mm-hmm. Because I'm walking at a snail space, and suddenly a half hour's gone. Yep. You know, so yeah, I, I done that for sure. I was doing that a lot last night. You know, uh, it, it, it's fun. It's, it's been it's been enjoyable. And but I, I, all that to say that I'm going to use my PlayStation Three as a, as a mock pack. I might mock pack this coming week. Yeah, that makes sense. I I realized, and now I'm trying, it it has kind of thrown me for a loop. So obviously with the new show coming out, I, my, my nostalgia toward the series and the games was reinvigorated. Not to say that I hadn't played Fallout 4 within the month before that release, but I'm talking about digging back to the old ones. And so my house is still in a bit of disrepair because so we bought the place what a year and a half ago and mm-hmm. moved in and then decided that hey we're going to finish the area above the garage which is my private parlor for performances and then the attic. We also had uh, an in-law suite put in the entire basement for my mother-in-law. So when did you entire- buy the house? When did, when did buy you buy it? buy it? Buy it. We so legally we closed on the property September first of twenty twenty three. Hey, that's my birthday. No, twenty twenty two. Twenty three. No, that would that'll be that would be my birthday last year. Oh, it's your it's birthday 20, every year. Just so you. Know. I mean, I mean, right. It's true. And but, what day is uh, what day is Christmas on? Uh, every year, December twenty fifth. Right, right. St. Patrick's Day? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> it's also hey, is it March 17th? It is. Every, every year? year. Um, every year. <laughs> well, how about Easter? That that one changes. There's, that changes. there's, there's some but sort my of point, that has something to do with the moons. My point is you were already in the house because 2023 I was in Romania. So I wasn't in the house. You are so, correct. 22. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's 2022. That, because we've been doing this podcast for over a year. What I'm trying to figure out is if if this podcast is older than you have in your house. So, all right. And it, ha- two, it all happened right around the same time. There's two dates with respect to that house that straddle the start of this podcast. The right. first date is when we closed on it. Correct. Which was September 1st of 22. I stand corrected. You are correct. We moved in, I want to say, October 24th or 25th of the same year. Right. Because I know that that we had started the podcast and you were moving into the house. Correct. I I couldn't remember whether or not you had already bought the house before our first episode dropped. I think that we, no, we closed on it because I had just probably just came back from Utah for the Vanishing Inc. retreat that we went on that year. So we actually pre-signed all of the documents. We closed on this house. We weren't even in the same state, which obviously is a post-pandemic thing. You would That would have been unheard of unless you're yeah. like, you know, other than like these rich ass real estate moguls, that's different. They probably have, you know, people that go do the signings for them right. or whatnot. You know, I, as well as I'm doing that, I'm not on that pay grade. Um, mm-hmm. So... That happened while we were in Utah on Vanishing's Utah retreat. And then we came back and I think started actually recording the podcast in September because we started live episodes in October of that year. So we moved in in October, started all this other stuff. So we have stuff still sitting in boxes, places that it doesn't belong because we like the final permit inspection for everything is scheduled for next week tuesday from the time that we're recording so we won't really start setting up that room 
and move in, in, in until probably till we have till we get back from Egypt and, and London. So somehow this all came about because of me talking about the mad dash to run around and try to find the older Fallout games, Fallout Three in New Vegas, which I know that I owned at some point in time. Still haven't found them yet, but realized that I that I guess the PlayStation Plus membership that they have has mm-hmm. a couple of different tiers to it. And I regularly maintain the subscription that allows you to play online games against other people, which I think is like a hundred bucks a year or something like that. Right. Um, give or take, like it might be $120. I don't know. Um, you, you either you wait till black Friday or cyber Monday and buy the gift cards cheaper for it and then re- right. you know, load them into your account. But otherwise, or, it's go, not- or go to Sam's club or Costco. Oh yeah. Cause oftentimes they'll have gift cards in their card rack. And then yeah. they usually take 10% off of gift cards in general. Like I only buy gift cards uh, when I'm, if I'm going to buy a bunch of gift cards because they also come in multi-packs. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be like $100 worth of gift cards. It'll be like five gift cards of $20 each, but you'll get it for like 84 bucks. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. So in, in, in searching to see if I could buy the game, you can't even buy digital download through the PlayStation Store or whatever it's called of 3 or New Vegas. However, both of them exist on the upper tier, the premium tier or whatever the hell it's called, of PlayStation Plus, right. which for me was like, you know, probably prorated a $30 or $40 upgrade. So I was like, ding, do it holy shit <laughs> i don't remember fallout vegas being as hard when i first played through it as as me trying to play through it now like i've got the shittiest guns they break so you're not dealing with guns breaking oh, really in fallout 4 so no. in, in new vegas we oh god this is just turning into a nerd podcast but who cares in new vegas we we talked about travel we talked about we're about to fly out and now we can also talk about some nerd yeah absolutely something for everyone here okay that's right um i have two players that are are under contract with the uh las vegas raiders so we'll touch a little sports ball here too and then i I just i'm just saying that so that we can really oh yeah also first podcast in the world. Uh um, right, I did want to ask you about that because I know that the draft just happened. I meant to talk about it the last time we, we recorded. And because of scheduling, we finally dropped that episode where I talk about the shit show that that industry is. Let's Correct. table that and, and we'll yes. come back to it probably in this episode. But let, if not, let, let, let's let's cool. let's do it during the live when we record live because I think we're recording live next week. So let, let's table that. Okay, and, so and... so listeners, if you care about the NFL stuff, we'll talk about it last week. Um <laughs> <laughs> good call we'll get yeah. to it in the past um yeah. <laughs> brought to you by topo chico the number one <laughs> time travel mineral water sign us up um so in new vegas the weapons break so one of the metrics on weapons and armor and other gear not junk but other gear mm-hmm. is the condition so if you've got like, like what kind of gun do you like to use? What, what have you become a customer? Uh, an, uh, the automatic shotgun. Okay. So if I had an automatic shotgun, every time I use it, that condition's going down. My, a, a minuscule amount. Right. But over time, it gets worse. You either acquire repair kits or I think eventually, because I'm really just scratched. This, like I'm on like level five with this playthrough right. right now because I don't have a ton of time to invest in it. Um, or I think you'll eventually be able to get to like little stations. Like you have crafting stations in fallout Correct. four yes. where you can repair stuff at the crafting stations and they use certain junk with different, um, you know, the junk Properties. has different components in it right. and there are perks, which you'll, excuse me, you'll also see coming up depending on how far along the game you are. Eventually you'll have a perk that when you, um, deconstruct the junk that there are more components like you can get gears and stuff out of stuff with one right of the perks I, I, I've, I've hit some perks but it, it's i tell you what 
the fact that a lot of the perks are show up as items you can find in areas, yeah, and, and the or comic books or the little bobbleheads, yeah. What the knowledge of that drives me nuts because then I am searching every nook and cranny in every location and because what I don't want to do, what I'm probably eventually going to do once I, I do the further in the storyline and or if I need is go back and watch walkthroughs. Yeah. Because they'll tell you where everything is. So an important thing for you to know crafting wise in Fallout 4 is that if you go to try to make something and you're missing a component, like for example, adhesive, Mm -hmm. you there's a button that you can hit to oh, yeah. highlight. You, you can highlight it, it, it'll put a little magnifying glass, and then it'll give a, you'll see items, and it'll like basically hotspot that item of hey, this is something that you've identified that you need, so right. grab it. What um, I don't, what what, I, what I've learned now, and I guess you know, understand the game mechanics of it all, is that the crafting tables. Are location specific at because this point in the game for you at yes. this point, in the game, right? Because I was hope you know I was hoping oh if I put it in the crafting table, it's in the crafting table. So anytime I come to a workshop, a workbench, then I have access to all the materials. Oh no 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 no, uh, you know you, you yeah. and the, and the problem that I have with that game, and, and there aren't many, but I I'm pretty sure that by the time you get can earn the perk to make those universal, you're basically done with the game. So right. it's so late in the game that you're able to unlock that, that it's no longer worth it. Um, but in, yeah. in New Vegas, automatic shotgun, right? That's what you said. Uh -huh. um, if I find another automatic shotgun, you can use those to kind of use one to repair the other. So you lose right. the, the secondary item in the inventory and it improves the condition of the one that you're currently using. So when you when the weapon condition lowers, the damage it does gets worse and the aim on it, you know, the accuracy gets worse and everything. So it kind of it, it's super difficult. And you start with like basically yeah. fucking BB guns. Right. Um, you start with shit. Yeah. So you know that obviously sucks. But I, I, I mean, tell you I, the other thing that I, I, I found out uh because I was playing, like when I was playing uh, Watch Dogs Two, okay, right, which I which is the last game I just played before I started Fallout, and I completed Watch Dogs Two except for you know I'm also a bit of a completionist, not gonna broken, uh, that I want to go do everything, but I've already beat the entire story, so now I'm just kind of running through doing small, you know, I've done most of the side bars, most of everything left is who cares, whatever. But when you when you pick up a weapon, like if you if you you know choose somebody or a gang member or whatever, and you pick up their weapon, that picking up the weapon adds ammunition to your. So you don't necessarily you already if you already have the weapon, it mm -hmm. just adds ammunition to the weapon. You don't have gotcha. You know, okay. Now I don't, so when I'm playing this game, like I'm going ahead and I'm killing all these you know ghouls or nomads, whatever, whatever. And they all have these weapons, and I'm grabbing all these weapons. And so I'm going to have them. Why am I, why am I so heavy? And I look at my inventory, and every single weapon that I grab is in my inventory. And so it's like I have five, you know, pistols. And I'm like, oh, I don't need all these. What? Oh, oh, it doesn't automatically translate to ammunition. Oh, let, let me right. dump a lot of these extra extraneous guns. Or, you know, uh, what I do like is, is, your companion is giving the stuff to your companion. Yes, that's a big, a, a big plus in in that. Cool. And then uh, also Skyrim, which is obviously it, it's the like the medieval version of Fallout. Same company makes it, but you're you know there's dragons and shit in in the right. Elder Scrolls games. It, it just the one thing I will tell you as far if you are completionist. The way that Brogan is, like, won't start a game if you can't get all the trophies. I'm not that bad. You will, for Fallout New Vegas, to get 100% on it, you have to play the game three times. Wow. There are There is a critical... And I'm, and I'm assuming that you have to play 
you know, you can save before you get to a critical point in which there are three different factions in Fallout New Vegas that at, at a critical point in the game, you must choose which of those factions to align with. Right. And then ride that course out to the end. There's like three Set. different ways that the game can end in, within the main quest. Right. Same as four. Same as Fallout 4. You can either join the Brotherhood of Steel. You can join the Minutemen. Uh, so far, to where I'm at in the game, or you can you know, stay independent, uh, just an independent surface uh, hunter or whatever. Dude, I, I'll tell you, the one thing that I think is hilarious about Fallout 4 is if you align with the Minutemen, and therefore, and then you end up going back with them to your original neighborhood from 200 plus years ago. That's what I've done. Mm -hmm. And recolonizing that eventually, uh, the the leader, and this has probably already happened with you, starts set. What? No, it happens right away. What am I talking about? He starts sending you on missions to little encampments to help people out and get them to join the Minutemen. Yeah. Well, eventually, the game kind of runs out of those. But he's always oh. coming at you, being like, "Hey, brother, when you get a chance, I got a new mission for you," and it's always one that you've already done. Oh, interesting. But all of the enemies and the baddies have respawned, so you get to go and do it again. But if, eventually, it just gets to the point where it's cycling through ones that you've already done. And I just dropped something off my desk. If anybody heard oh. that crash, well, <laughs> everybody heard that. Yeah, um, all is good in the world, and uh, we'll we'll take it out in post or not. No, we uh, won't. No, we won't. Uh, <laughs> who are we to just tell you lies here? Um, but yeah, it's uh. So it kind of ends up becoming a running joke of like, all right, is it Raiders? Is it Super Mutants? Is it, right. you know, what infestation am I going to clean up this time? Right. <laughs> but it's always yeah. a great way to just like grab some extra caps, grab some experience. Well, what a grind. Right. Yeah. What a grind. And like, you know, I think we talked about this on another episode. Like, I am a grinder. I am a grinder and a hoarder when it comes to games like that. Same. I will like like way back in the Super Nintendo game days. I used to play this game that was about as open world as you can get in Super Nintendo. So by today's standpoint, it's relatively linear, but you do have free range about where you're going and how long you stay there, and if you backtrack okay. on the map or whatnot. This game called Secret of Evermore um i've heard of it you you've most people have probably heard of secret of mana which is in the same feeling and series and is the more popular game in that series but secret of evermore is a game that i played so many times and you know i still have the original cartridge for it and there would get to be in, to a point early on where especially like the first time i ran through this game where I spent like this, this will make some people that your stomachs turn and your head spin. I want to say that I spent a week in the same like region of this game, which really amounted to only a handful of screens because you would leave the screen. And when you would go back to that screen, all of the baddies would respawn. Respawn. Wow. Okay. So you're just cracking these enemies and then you go, you know, you get to a good two screen place where there's a decent amount of baddies here and a decent amount of baddies there. And I'm just going to bounce back and forth between these two, crush everything that's here and level up and level up and level up. And back in the day, you know, in the Super Nintendo games, whatever bad guy was, whatever level it was designed to be in the beginning. So if I can right. spend time and get to level 20 where at the end of the level where i gr grinded to get to level 20 the the big boss is level five you can almost one shot him right and I, I liked at that point in time and i don't mind it now although it's a little bit more difficult because a lot of times the baddies scale to your level i i would i i, I love just being able to go and steamroll people and yeah. you know it's not like i didn't do the work i put in the time it was very tedious to spend like a fucking week all on two screens yeah that's the fun of uh the spider-man games 
I played the Marvel Spider-Man games on PlayStation 4. And, you know, you go through the entire story, you, you, you do it all, you know, you, you slowly level up and you get the extra powers and skills or whatever, whatever. Once you beat it, then you can actually go back and continue through the open world, you know, find anything you didn't find, you know, beating the factions. My only issue is what kind of stopped the, the, a lot of the, the extra play of it is that when you go back, a lot of those groups of baddies that you would have to beat, they, they don't respond. They don't disappear. Once you clear that area, the area is clear. Right, yeah. And so then you're swinging through the neighborhood trying to find a, a group of baddies to help you get the points you need to level up. And they become fewer, fewer and further between. I'm like, no, respawn. Keep the city in turmoil. I need, I need the points. <laughs> I need, yeah, you know. So when I played through, through the second time, there is a part where if you don't continue through the story, they do keep respawning, right? Because the city's still crappy. So they keep popping up everywhere. So then you, okay, I'll just stay here and I'll just swing through and I'll grind and I'll, I'll get all the points I need to level up my web shooters until I'm, at the top max, so by the time I do get to the end, I, I I'm already in the 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 top armor and my weapons are the best and what have you. And I haven't found the the, the yeah. What I'm having with Fallout Four is the the grabbing too much stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, I I cause cause I, I come from a gaming aspect where anything you see that you can grab, you grab. You know, and I have to go, no, I don't need those dinner trays. I don't need those coffee mugs. I don't need the pencil. I do need that duct tape because I do need adhesive. You start to yeah. learn what items become scarce that you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like the Raider leathers and shit like that, those are one of the first ones to stop collecting when you right. pop Raiders. What weapons yeah. do they have? Are they good enough? And then eventually you'll get into the mindset of some sort of value ratio. That's um, it. You know, you're, you're, I'm, I'm guessing that in your mind, you've already kind of boiled that down to, to like a 20 to one ratio or something like that. Maybe a 10 to one. Um, you know, if it's, if the yeah. value is not 10 times the weight or 20 times the weight or whatever, it's not worth picking up unless of course Pretty it's much. core items. Um, right. You know, and and it, 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 I tell you, it, it, it fights against me. It's hard. Like I ran into, um, I beat a guy wearing a tech armor, right? And you can yeah. collect all the armor from it. Yeah. The armor's fucking heavy. And but, it's like, I, but when you're wearing it, it increases what you can carry. Correct. Except when you you're already, you are, no, you're already wearing the power armor. And. You you beaten a couple of these dudes, and then they all have this yeah. <laughs> power armor that you can strip off their body, and it doesn't. Uh, un, un, unlike a lot of other junk or other armor, you can't scrap it. Right. Which I didn't know. So I like I slowly carried all this extra armor, but to you a workspace able to store it and a set on a power armor station. Right, but you know, I wasn't I wasn't near a power armor station, so I said, you know, what I do. I just I, I I upgraded my power armor, and then I said I'll scrap the extra stuff, and so I I grabbed everything, I drop everything, at the workspace, and I I I go to the workspace, and I try to, and I go, it won't. Oh, I can't even scrap it. I said, oh, but this is this is how I am, and you can't fast travel when you're carrying too much shit. Right. Yeah. So I pick up just enough items until it says you're carrying too much stuff, you can't run. I drop the last item. I fast travel to my home base, the sanctuary, drop everything there, fast travel back, do that same routine. I did that for, I was up until 3.30 last night doing that bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. It's a good thing that you and I are in drastically different time zones and will continue to be there. Otherwise, I'd get your ass on the Fallout 76, and then we'd never do anything productive for a long period of time. I tell you what, and then that may, that could still happen. I mean, because I know I have a I have a somewhat pretty wide open schedule, and I saw 
uh, Fallout 76 available to download in the PS Plus and I'm not my PS Plus thing. And I know it was because the show came out. Yeah. That they're offering a special. So it was either Fallout 3, Fallout 76, or Fallout 4 that you could download. And you could download all three of them, but I don't have the memory space on my PlayStation right, right. to download all three. So I said, well, you know what? Let me. So I did some research. Okay. What, of the three, which one should I download? And everybody's like, Fallout 4 is most like the show. I said, okay, since my reference point is the show, I'll download Fallout 4 and play that. And so that that was my uh, decision. Of course, then I started watching other videos. Uh, you know, I watched breakdown videos about the shows that I watched, the nerd videos. Shout out to New Rock Stars and shout out to uh, Screen Crush. Those are my two favorites. Uh, actually, you know, one, one of the editors of New Rock Stars was one of my interviews. Shout out to Alexa, the editor. Uh, she's an editor for New Rock Stars and for the Guardians of the Galaxy. I digress. <laughs> the the they started doing breakdown videos and talking about Fallout Three and showed, showing videos of Fallout Three and I went, oh that okay so that I could I, I can see me playing that as well. But let me get through Fallout Four first. And so in 2025, I'll start <laughs> I'll start Fallout Three because I'm I'll probably be playing this for the rest of the year maybe yeah. yeah it's uh i i played like i said the early days of fallout 76 when it was super glitchy it was before the time and for anybody who plays this that i think that they eventually opened up where you could like get private servers and and play stuff like that um i i probably if it still exists again it's been years since i've uh played this game but if all of my stuff is still saved somewhere i have weapons that have explosive ammo mods that they subsequently outlawed so you can't get them now i may still have them from when i i did oh, wow. but um but they also kind of you know retooled and made it so that they were less powerful but um yeah that was a game that that i used to play a lot when it first came out yeah like yeah, divorce that's... Almost divorce level a lot. Oh, <laughs> I get look. I have to mitigate me playing this game because I will sit in this office. You know, I try. I try to play at night too because wife goes to bed early, and so that late night is my playtime. You know, otherwise, so I make sure that I don't start. If we ha try to spend some time, I make sure that we eat together, and then we're watching TV. And then if she starts to nod off, I'll swing my ass right back into the office and get on the sticks for a couple hours. There you go. You know, but as we're talking about, oh man, I really want to play. But yeah, so yeah, man, Fallout is, is, is a fun game, and I thought, and that's the reason I'm taking my PlayStation with me when I go back to Spain in less than two weeks. I I I, I make a point not to tell my wife that it's less than two weeks because she starts to get the shakes and the sweats. Yeah, because there's a lot happening, a lot going on. So yeah. Uh, I'm like, really looking forward to it. Uh, that's a really cool thing is when this episode drops, I'll be in Spain. I'll be promoting it from Malaga. I will have done uh, our first Mahjong Sunday. I hopefully will have taught. Nope, I'll be teaching an upcoming workshop for improv uh, at at one of the parks there, and I'll be having a line dance class probably at the same park. Uh, all that I'm guessing company. that I will be uh, in London with a pint in hand and um, hanging out with Sebastian Robbins when this one drops. Who knows? Nice. Who knows? Yeah, uh, checking out the the London Tower or, or Big Ben or the or Parliament. When or you travel, when you're when you're overseas, do you use um, eSIMs? For the region that you're in, or just hook the Wi-Fi and use WhatsApp, or what's your what's your go-to there? Right now, we use WhatsApp. Okay, uh, we we do have an e our phones also have eSIMs as well, uh, but we mainly we mainly use WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the the mode of WhatsApp and social media. Yeah, I mean every everybody's usually connectable one way or the other. I do have to teach my mother how to use WhatsApp. Uh, to to communicate with her when we're overseas, I tried that before we left the first time, and she didn't get a grasp of it. So, I mean, our plan still has international texting, so yeah. I can text for no, for no cost as long as I'm on the Wi-Fi. But like calling, 
would, would be a bit much. But you know, I tell my mom she's worth it. She's worth a phone call if I have to pay for it. That's fine. But but mom, how about you learn to use WhatsApp so I don't have to pay for it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Are you are you do you what use WhatsApp? Like are you plan to use WhatsApp when you're in Egypt and London? That's the plan. And 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 then I'll uh I mean I've already lined up with how I'm gonna get an eSIM in a couple of days. I'll be buying that because it gives you whatever it gives you for a 14 day span. So I'm not at the 14 days until I return window yet. Um, but once I get there, which will be mid next week, um, right. I'll probably be buying that eSIM around the time that we're recording last week's episode and, um, and live streaming last week's episode. So, um, hell, maybe I'll have done it on the air so that I can oh, there you go. explain to people how it works or you yeah. can hear me. Shout profanities when it doesn't work right. <laughs> hey, you you listened to last week's episode. You know better than I currently do how that went. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So leave us a comment and tell us what you thought about it and how, how correct we were. Yeah. But yeah, man. Awesome. Well, you know, uh also speaking, we keep saying this 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 program has been brought to you by uh Topo Chico. But this program yes. has actually been brought to you by our friends over at cruisehabit.com. That's right. Shout out to our friends, Billy and Larissa. I'm Billy. And I'm Larissa. Come talk ship with us at cruisehabit.com slash BSDN. Safe, Safe travels. travels. That's a nice, short, and sweet. Yeah. But you know what's not short? The 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 length and volume of valuable information on that website. It, it really... You, it's broken down by cruise exactly. line. It is broken down by what are you into? Like you can really get a good idea of where you want to be and how you want to do it through their website. They've got videos, they've got write-ups. There's a little like message board thing where you could be part of their community as well. Uh, they do, they do group trips. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely get involved. Go swing on over to cruisehabit.com. Cruisehabit.com. Cruisehabit.com slash BSDN. Cruisehabit.com, bitches. Yeah, bitches. <laughs> Speaking of cruises, I'm, I've been having a very serious case of FOMO because, you know, the, the transatlantic, the Virgin Voyages transatlantic mm -hmm. is, was this week or the, the, these two weeks or right now. And I have friends on it. Pe people who were on the last cruise are on this one again, and they keep seeing videos. And shout out to our friend Marla, who I interviewed for the podcast, uh, Mahjong Dominance, or whatever thing her episode call was. She's on the cruise again, teaching more people how to play Mahjong. So the International Mahjong Butt Touching Society is growing. We need, and our friend Chris over at GoWithLisa.com is, is, uh, getting all of the information from one Matt Donnelly, the mind noodler about the cruises that he's going to be doing with, I don't remember what line, but right. mm -hmm. Chris from go with Lisa.com will know. I saw in something that he shot me an email coordinated with Matt on one of those cruises was going to potentially be like 12 days bouncing around different islands in Greece. Mm. We need to figure out one of those that Sweet Maddie D is going to be on and yes. somehow manage to coordinate that we're doing it. And obviously yes. we'll do something like that we, with no expectations of your showing up. We will certainly publicize well in advance that we're doing that and obviously line you up with, with Chris uh, to potentially join us if you want to, because I'll tell you with the group stuff, that's the easiest way to do it. Something like that, because you just call the one point contact and be like, Hey, uh, that trip to big sexy is going to be on. Okay, cool. Click boom. Uh, yeah. And then it just becomes a matter of, do you want, you know, the inside cabin? Do you want a balcony? Do Ocean you view, balcony, room? right. Blah, 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 blah. You know, pick your room, which there'll be slight price variances with the different rooms or whatever. And away you go. You know, a lot of times when you book with a travel agent, whether it be 
our friend Chris, whether it would be with Billy and Larissa in their group plans or any of that other kind of stuff, just, even if you're just doing a cruise, just you or you and your friends or you and your significant other, if it's not a big organized to do, working through a travel agent, you're going to get extra perks. You're going to get extra onboard credit. Um, so another travel tip so we can back end all this stuff. I realized that if you own shares of stock, in a lot of these cruise lines, like Carnival Cruise Line, I don't remember what the number is, but if you own something like 50 shares or 100 shares or something like that, there is an app that you can link up with that will give you additional onboard credit just because you have shares of stock in that company. Nice. And a lot of cruise lines have that. So it's kind of free money if you already have the stock. I'm not saying, I'm not, right. I'm not giving anybody investment advice saying go buy stocks so you can get on board cruise credit but if you already have it smoke them if you got them you know what i mean exactly exactly or you know if that is an incentive for you to, to buy cruise ship stock then just know that that is an option to you yeah we're not, saying, we're not saying to do it one way or the other just be aware the stock market is volatile and you know gains are not prom or promised or whatever but if you're in those kind of investments you might want to look into that i know that i have looked into doing so i just not in the financial place to actually pull the trigger, but I'm working on getting there. I'm hoping some things, you got some irons in the fire, as it were, some big plans. And of course, you know, you all can help with that stuff by swinging on over to our our lovely website, bullwiththebutthole.com. When there you can uh, subscribe to join our Patreon. And th there's a free tier. We recommend joining the community. We're making everybody, if you're hearing this, and you're not already a part of our Patreon community, go do it. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. The numbers actually help us out. So uh, swing on over to bullwiththebutthole.com. If you don't want to type butthole in your search engine, just go to uh, www.patreon.com uh, backslash big sexy digital nomad. Uh, join our Patreon page. Uh, if and then, if of course, if you think this podcast is worth more than zero dollars, you can sign up for a paid tier, and we'd appreciate that, of course. And then uh, doing so, join the community gets you a, a mention on the podcast. That's uh, right. The, the bigger the tier you're on, the more perks you get. We're all about perks. We'd love to get to a place where we have to start sending out shit. Yeah, you know, and where we have enough subscribers that we have to hire a third person to handle all that because i know that both of us are way too busy uh, and I, it won't be easy for me to ship anything from spain but yeah, you know yeah. if we have a, a third party that we can you know hire to take care of that kind of stuff that would be amazing i would love to get to that place so and we can do that with your help so feel free to sign on uh, the other thing you can do to help us out is uh, swing on over to our merch store at whereisbigsexy.com that's where like you're putting on the clothes now, we don't get a whole lot. We get actually very little for merch purchases. But still, every little bit helps. Every every drop in the bucket will eventually fill the bucket. You know what I mean? And then the, the, the absolute best way you can help out the podcast is tell somebody. Yeah. Tell somebody about the podcast. We don't care about pyramid schemes. So no. if you want to tell five people, if you want to tell 50 people, I'm going tell to those, I'm all about tell, the pyramid. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tell five people, tell those five people to tell their five people. That's right. Make sure each of those five people tell five people. Until then, till further notice, this is a pyramid scheme. Tell five people, tell them to tell five people. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, Step we, three, we, profit. Profit. And then, believe me, you know, once, once again, I just I, I can't make you this promise as our subscribers grow and our, our the money we get from Patreon and other sponsors and stuff grows, this will only get better. This will will we'll upgrade equipment, upgrade travel, we'll be able to host events. I mean, like, we were perfect on episode 80, and it's only gonna get better from there. Exactly, exactly. How do you improve on perfection? Money. That's how you do it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you just grow and build from so again, there. It's as simple as telling five friends and asking them to fi ask five friends. Exactly. And don't worry. 
because it's it's it, you know what honestly it's going to be something different than a pyramid i'm not quite sure what it is because if you told five friends and asked them to tell five friends so on and so forth that would be a pyramid but understand that when when they do start to listen we'll also be telling them to tell five friends so it's just going to be bigger than a pyramid That's much right. bigger than a pyramid yes it's going to be a global sized pyramid yes international we want this to be an international sized pyramid right. touching the four corners of the globe i love the the, the term the idea of four corners of a of a spherical object but yeah right. we'll touch all four corners of the globe so definitely Next do that week, we'll be talking to you about how birds aren't real brought to you by coca-cola <laughs> but in the meantime Safe, safe travels. travels.